one. Uh, hello, well, af good afternoon and uh, good evening. And welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is the September 21st uh, edition, and this is the EU uh, US time slot. Uh, today we have myself, Bruno Rockton, and Mark Wade has joined. Uh, so welcome, and thank you for joining us. Uh, on the agenda today, uh, some announcements and blog posts that just came out uh, about Hectoberfest 2023 and the Jenkins Governance Board elections this year. Uh, some updates on Google Summer of Code. Uh, some uh, some t some pointers on the Java proposal that we've been discussing for the last few weeks. Uh, the uh, addition of the platform information section, which I've been working on. Uh, so just a quick couple notes on DevOps World Tour. And uh, something that we've been discussing again uh, last few weeks, describing the process of choosing a plugin bomb. And uh, just a short note on the August newsletter. Is there anything else that needs to be added to the agenda today or anything else anyone would like to put on there? Nothing I can think of. Thank you. Okay. Nothing for me. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, to get things started, so Hacktoberfest 2023 is uh, going to be here very shortly. Uh, we just published a blog post for announcing it from Jean-Marc Messin. Uh, so just going over Hacktoberfest, what to expect, what the process is going to look like this year, and just what to, and uh, just the kind of nice to have the resources for contributors and maintainers, uh, and some notes about uh, what differences there are going to be this year. Uh, so it's the 10th anniversary, which is really exciting. Uh, and one of the biggest changes this year is that there isn't going to be a physical swag or t-shirt uh, reward. Uh, it will be a digital reward kit, and uh, the first 50,000 uh, participants to complete for uh, pull requests will have a tree planted in their name. So uh, really exciting, really a uh, little different, but still Hacktoberfest has always been a really uh, watermarked event for Jenkins, so really excited to have that happening again this year. Uh, next up, so the Jenkins Governance Board uh, and officer elections season is upon us. Uh, the nominations and voter registration period opened up on September 18th, so just a few days ago now. Uh, and the nomination period will extend to October 27th, while voter registration goes until November 5th. Uh, once those periods have passed, voting will start, and uh, yeah, we'll get to see what the future holds for our governance board and officers. Um, just to be very clear, the election voter 2023 group is a necessity if you want to register and vote in this year's election. Uh, every year uses a different group. So uh, you can check out the blog post and if you navigate to the group here, uh, mine says leave, but if you're not part of the group, it will say join and you can uh, join in here so that you will be part of the election process. Uh, two governance boards and all five offer, officer positions are up for election as they are, uh, as the officer positions uh, every year. And uh, yeah, and then the post has other key dates and other information, um, but when we get closer to the actual election time and results, there will be other uh, communications to be had. Um, the blog post also shares some ways to contribute and participate uh, as part of the voting process. Um, we are encouraging everyone that they've contributed to Jenkins. Um, we're not requiring any sort of proof or validation of that, but the idea is that if you're participating, uh, that you're part of the community. Uh, and thanks to Alexander Brendes for uh, putting that together and posting that. And thanks to Alex and uh, Uli Hafner for uh, running the elections this year. Next up, so the Google Summer of Code is uh, approaching an end. We've got uh, two projects that have uh, fully completed and two that are have been extended that will be completed in the next couple of weeks. So really, really exciting there. Thanks to all of the participants, mentors, org admins, everyone that's been a part of Google Summer of Code uh, as it is every year, wildly important and crucial to the community and very successful. Uh, and the final presentations were uh, were. Uh, done last week in the Jenkins online meetup. So that recording is available here and on the Jenkins YouTube channel. So uh, if you want to see direct insights and uh, details from the participants about their projects, you can view them there. Uh, as a quick overview, uh, so the Docker Compose 
for tutorials has been completed as a project. It does need some more work to uh, deploy and include in the documentation, um, but it's there. And uh, potentially during Hacktoberfest, this could be something that gets worked on with the infra team, but uh, no guarantees there. Uh, the building uh, Jenkins.io with alternative build tools project uh, is still being worked on, but the goal is there. Uh, Van Diet has been doing a lot of work on this. Uh, they've had to do a couple of pivots for stuff like Gatsby, uh, but uh, they're they're getting a lot of work done there. Uh, they have their navigation has been sorted for the most part. Uh, the demo site's available to view and and uh, check out, but um, amazing work here. It looks really great, and, and I'm excited to use the uh, the new site for the documentation. Uh, da, 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 the GitLab plugin moder modernization. Um, now, Bruno, I forgot, uh, I didn't check. Is this one uh, completed or is this one of the one that's extended that will be uh, finished in the next couple of weeks? So the project is finished, oh, okay. but the, the code is not merged to the plugin yet. Uh, it's the story that's that's there is correct, that I've still got interactive testing that has to be done. And then once we've completed the interactive testing, will merge to the, the main line and release a new version. Great, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, and for the plugin health score, so uh, we've had several blog posts that Degree's put together and written for us, published, um, detailing the different probes that they've been working on in that project. So uh, there's the Renovate probe, there is uh, the JSR305 probe, there's um, just, yeah, the JSR305 probe, uh, number of open issues probe. So um, lots of work being done there by Jagruti. Uh, that's uh, also finishing up and I think is going to be um, finishing up in the next couple of weeks. So um, again, just fantastic work. Thanks to everyone for their dedication and their efforts in this. Uh, really great to see the results. Uh, next up, so the Java 11, 17, and 21 discussion that has been ongoing for uh, some time now, uh, continuing to be developed. This is a pro this is a proposal that is still moving uh, and still being worked on. Um, so, uh, some things that we've uh, actually, Mark, uh, would you mind uh, providing some insight and background on this, just so uh, it's nice and clear? I don't want to misspeak. Sure. Yeah. So the proposal is a two plus two plus two support model for Java. Java delivers a new long-term support release every two years. And that clock is something they've committed to. And they, they did it in Java 17 in 2021. They've done it now with Java 21 in 2023. And we fully expect that they'll do it again with Java 25 in uh, 2025. Uh, by being on this clock of every two years releasing, that means, and with a six-year release cycle, release cycle, that means that Java versions are supported by, there are up to three versions of Java supported by Eclipse, Temerin, and OpenJDK at any one time. Uh, and the Jenkins developers have said, hey, three Java versions is too many. So what this proposes is let to support at one time. So this proposes a general model that says, we'll support Java, a new Java version for the first two years of its life. In the second two years of its life, so years three and four, we will make that Java version the minimum required Java version. And in the last two years of the life of a Java release, uh, that Jenkins will no longer run on that Java version. That way, we're only supporting two Java versions at one time. Uh, this, this, oddly enough, aligns somewhat with Oracle's commercial support thing that they do. They, for, for the first two years of their license, say, hey, well, you can use it for free in the first two years. In the third year, you can also use it for free. But after that, you have to buy a license from us. Now, Jenkins doesn't rely on Oracle's JDK. We use OpenJDK and Eclipse Temerin. But the notion that we don't support something all the way through the end of the life of the JDK in order to reduce our burden is a fair, a fair behavior. 
what we've got is a transition period from the current world we're in right now with Java 11, where we'll support it all the way until Java 11 reaches end of life, right? Java, Java 11 will no longer be supported by the upstream providers in October of 2024. We'll make this transition then to make Java 17 our minimum version for a 12 month period, then switch over and make Java 21 the minimum version for an 18 month period. And then with Java 25, we're onto the clock finally of two years supported, but not required minimum, two years required minimum, two years no longer supported. Does that give enough of an explanation, Kevin? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so, Mark. That's very clear and it explains everything. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, and some uh, some things to note about the proposal. So this has been sent out to the uh, developers list, governance board, officers. Everyone is very much on board with this plan and, and approves of it. So uh, it is something that everyone's in agreement on and, and looks to be the plan. Uh, look, some, looks to be what we're moving towards. Um, and to have the developers and others uh, really backing it up is exciting. You know, they um, have to deal with this directly. So having their encouragement and their uh, backing is really nice to have. Okay. Uh, so uh, next up on the agenda. So um, something that we've been discussing and I've been working on is adding a platform information section to the Jenkins documentation. Uh, so this is just a place to consolidate and uh, contain things like uh, the support policies that we offer. Uh, and then additionally, uh, things like Java upgrade instructions uh, and other parts of platform uh, information. So uh, I've been able to submit the pull request. Mark's gone through, reviewed it, has provided some notes and some uh, changes for me that I needed to take care of. And I've also provided it to the uh, my docs team that they've been able to review it as well. So I'm going through and applying updates as needed. Uh, and yeah, um, hopefully, hopefully that uh, I'm hoping that I can get this all taken care of and have an updated version available to review. Uh, and then uh, the idea is this, that this will uh, sit in the documentation uh, so that there is a section dedicated to the support policies so that uh, users don't necessarily have to go to the installing documentation just to get some of these. Um, and it also, uh, again, consolidates the Java information. Um, there are upgrade guidelines that, again, are not necessarily in a dedicated spot, so this gives them a home. Uh, and on that note as well, with uh, Java 21 being released just this week, uh, that's another um, set of upgrade instructions that will be added to that as well. Uh, from preliminary looks right now, it doesn't seem to be different from the Java 17 instructions, but something else to include. Uh, next up, so DevOps World Tour has officially kicked off. Last week was the first conference, uh, the 13th and the 14th, which Mark attended and uh, gave a talk during. Uh, there are there's still time to register for the Chicago and Santa Clara events, and uh, there's also the Singapore event. And then uh, the London event as well. I think the London event has changed dates and uh, the Singapore one is still happening, but it, it looks like it is now free registration for the Singapore event. That's a short about that. I just saw the date that has moved for London. It's the uh, 5 of December now, instead of the 29th of November. Thank you very much, Bruno. Yeah, uh, and then, um, yeah, Mark uh, gave his talk there, the business benefits of contributing to open source. Um, said he had a really great experience. Mark, do you wanna share any um, any insights from the conference? It was a great conference, thoroughly enjoyed it. And the, the talk was well received. Had five people who met with me afterwards and said, I wanna adopt a plugin. That's good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, so next up, um, the how to describe the process of choosing a plugin bomb version. We've been discussing this for the last few weeks. Uh, there hasn't necessarily been any progress on uh, getting this implemented or changing this, um, but we have been having that conversation to decide what 
potential, what possibilities there are. Uh, and yeah, there are, uh, there's opportunities to make sure that everything is aligned so that we can cut down on confusion or any kind of um, incompatibility mistakes that folks might make. Or, uh, you know, uh, I, I am guilty of reading things too fast sometimes and everything's blurs together or I misread something. Um, yeah, having a very clearly stated version for some of this stuff would make a big difference in those cases. Um, yeah, and then. Um, Bruno, did you want to share anything that we discussed oh, earlier or no? I just wanted to say that I played guilty. I uh, wrote some inconsistent pom.xml because it was not crystal clear for me which version of pom versus Jenkins version I should choose. Maybe the doc exists somewhere, but frankly, I was kind of puzzled and I read too quickly. Uh, yesterday, again, um, thanks a lot, Mark, for helping by the way, and sorry to have make you lose your time uh, because I hadn't read um, correctly the update, um, a plugin tutorial. And I quickly pointed finger at Dependabot saying, ah, the bot did the bad thing. And no, it was me just because I read too fast and didn't think twice. I just copied paste and forgot about it. So if somewhere there could be a um, definitive guide on how to choose your bomb version related to your jenkins version and so on yeah that would help people like me but i don't think there are so many people like me who try to maintain a plugin while not understanding what they are doing <laughs> anyhow actually i think there are a lot of people exactly like that and and so the the improve a plugin tutorial needs i look at it now and it needs improvements certainly and insertion of correct values etc there's there's plenty to be improved there. So yeah, and I think the the earlier question you noted of how do you choose the plugin bill of materials version is one that was raised as an issue in the plugin bill of materials repository. And we haven't resolved it yet. It's a it's a good issue and it needs it needs resolving. And I was not uh, trying to say that the um, update to plugin tutorial was badly written in that specific section. It's just that it's written that you should uh, make your brain work and find the correct version, which I didn't do. So I just copied and pasted, and that's my mistake. Well, but but actually, the plugin, the plugin tutorial, the Improve a Plugin tutorial, is in almost every other case exactly plug and play, is exactly copy and paste. And so yes. by having this case where we say, "Oh no, you must apply intense human thought." I think instead oh. it'll be better for us if we if we make this one also very easy to copy and paste because we've got the we've got the data elsewhere in the pages about which Jenkins version we're recommending. It's just we haven't done the work yet to make that tutorial adapt to that information because the choosing a Jenkins version page is automatically updated whenever oh. we release a new LTS. And that automatic update could as readily apply to the tutorial as it does to currently to that choosing a Jenkins version page. So there's there's truly no reason why we can't make that choosing a Jen or make that plugin bill of materials page as smart as the choosing a Jenkins version page. Okay, got it. It's so just it's work. Already, yeah, it's already working for choosing the right Jenkins version. Right, um, yeah. But it's fact, not with update CLI, it's with another thing. No, no, I think it's actually using, well, sort of. So let's let's see what it is. So Kevin, open up that page. Let's look at what the page says. So if, yeah, I think uh, if you go back up a page or two from where you were. Yeah. Uh, the, da, 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 da. Yeah, this one? this one. Okay, this page has inside of it, in, and scroll down a little further, Kevin, we'll see numbers. Yeah, there we go. So this currently recommended version thing chooses the current LTS as the one it says could also consider. The preceding LTS and the one before that are both in the earlier sentence, all under currently recommended versions. And those are injected automatically. Oh. And so that version number, and it's it's done by I forget what the technique is. It's some Ruby code that reads from a from from a I think from Update Center to figure out what the most recent releases are. 
but but this same technique there's no reason it can't be applied elsewhere it just isn't currently applied elsewhere okay or if ever i could find the source of truth i could maybe try it with update CLI because i'm already yeah. updating some other parts of the documentation but yeah per, and, and that's that's a valid point because the the update cli code might be able to read the data source here and do yep. a better job of updating this page so that instead of generating the page at inserting the content at page generation time we insert the content through pull requests that are intentionally mm -hmm. placed mm -hmm. So yeah. now I apologize. I have to drop off for another meeting. Thank but, you, Mark. But this sure. one, this one is very much a Bruno. You discovered a, a very real problem. It is that yeah. choosing a Jenkins Bill of Materials version is more difficult than it should be, and and it highlight hints at at other areas. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Take care. Uh, so yeah. Um, also, I just well, noticed we're a little off, but that's it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it might not be recommended yet. It's automatic, but we don't know how often it's run. Yeah, so, we, we officially are on two point uh, two or three, Th two, I guess. Yeah, point, yeah, we're on point two now. Um, yeah, because yesterday we just had the release, and this it was a mm. the security release yesterday. Um, yeah, for both weekly and LTS. So, uh, yeah, those things were updated. But um, yeah, no, that's, uh, I, like Mark said, I think that's a really great issue to point out and have. Uh, it gives us something to work on, and uh, I think, like he was saying, opens the door to see like what else we could do to help that kind of thing, or what mm -mm. other you know gaps there might be where we can fill them in like that. So, yeah, thanks very much, Bruno. Welcome. More work to do. Um, that's cool. We love it. You know, each and every time in the Jenkins community, when I point finger or something, say, oh, it doesn't work, it ends up with, mm -hmm, maybe you should open a PR. But that's cool because <laughs> I'm learning a lot. Yeah, the finger that you're pointing gets immediately pointed back. Yeah. So. Oh. Makes me yeah. think of, this... you know, the Spider Man pointing a finger at Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did it. No, you didn't. You didn't. Yeah. Great. Uh, cool. And then uh, last thing I have on the agenda, just um, the August newsletter is currently submitted as a pull request. Once it gets, um, I think there's one or two other updates that need to just be added to it. But once it's done, um, that'll be published and we'll have that out on the blog. Cool. Uh, August was a little bit slower, so it's not as much content from all the SIGs, but uh, there will be a newsletter regardless. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, does that is there anything else that you'd want to discuss today, Bruno, or throw it on the agenda? No. Thank you, Kevin. I think we covered all I had in mind. OK, great. Uh, so I'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a moment then, in that case. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining. Uh, recording will be available 24 to 48 hours uh, once we wrap up here. And uh, yeah, until next week, take care. Thanks for joining again. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.